Place Called Home by Lori Wick Chapter 29 Hurry, Daddy, I can't wait to see Luke's ranch, Caroline stated. What's your hurry? The ranch isn't going anywhere. At her father's answer, Caroline turned with a huff on the buggy seat. This action brought a grimace of pain to her face. Can you believe this buggy? It's ancient, and this seat is like a board, and to top it off, it was the best the livery had. Caroline's voice was heavy with disgust. Frank slanted a look at his daughter, thinking as he did so how he had courted her mother in a buggy worse off than this one. At the time, he didn't have two nickels to rub together, but it hadn't mattered. He and Lily, then and still today, had eyes only for each other. Before Caroline came along, Frank had taken over his father-in-law's breeding yards. By the time Caroline was four, he was well established, his reputation was spotless, and his stock had more than tripled. Caroline, too young to remember anything except a fancy house with many servants, had never worked a day in her life. Frank knew it was his own fault that she was more little girl than woman. When his little girl had begged to come north with him in Lily's absence, he couldn't say no. But he was brought out of his reverie by his daughter's whining. Are we almost there? The road rounded a large clump of trees, and just as Luke had directed, the house was in view. With an eighth of a mile, Frank was turning up the driveway and pulling the buggy to a stop in front of the house. Silas came out of the front door just as Frank helped Caroline down from the buggy. Hello, he greeted them with a friendly smile. Luke is in the barn. Come on, I'll show you. The three of them made their way around to the side of the yard and headed for the massive, well-built structure housing the Cameron's 26 horses. They found Luke in the alleyway between the stalls, checking the injured foreleg of a four-week-old colt. The colt's mother beckoned to him from a few stalls away, giving Luke the extra chore of trying to hold the young animal still. Without a word, Silas stepped over to hold the colt's head, freeing both of Luke's hands for the leg. Frank stood still, admiring the two men as they worked gently and effectively with the horse, unaware that the train of his daughter's thoughts was quite different. Dressed in her yellow riding habit, she expected to catch Luke's eye the moment she walked into the stable. She felt angry at his lack of attention. She, de she determined to make Luke notice her today, so he would want to see her every day they were here for the next few weeks. The chambers stayed long at the ranch that day. The cool weather was perfect for riding, and they spent most of the afternoon on horseback. It was during supper that Frank announced that he and Caroline would be going home Monday. Caroline's reaction told Luke and Silas that she had not known. Monday? But we just got here. Why Monday? Caroline whined and argued, but Frank was adamant. I'm ready to get home, Caroline. You understand, don't you, Luke? Of course, Frank. I'll be back some time when Lily can come. She would love your rolling hills. You'll be welcome any time, Luke assured him. Caroline proceeded to pout for the remainder of the evening. Luke, unaccustomed to this in a grown woman, felt he needed to make amends. The way Caroline's face lit up when he asked her to go riding with him Saturday morning told him he had been duped. Realizing it was too late now, and feeling disgust at his own gullibility, he had a date to go riding with a spoiled young woman, whether he liked it or not. Christine shifted once again before leaving her seat to pace around the room. She turned to find Grandma M watching her. I feel so excited about seeing the ranch tomorrow. I can't sit still. What time are we going to be leaving? Grandma M laughed as she answered, right after breakfast so you won't have to wait long. The women talked for a while before Christine retired early, somehow hoping to make morning come sooner. Knocking and then pounding at the front door awoke Christine. The pocket watch on her bedside table said 3.45. Christine heard Grandma M's bedroom door open as she reached the parlor. Upon opening the front door, she found Maggie, with Emily in her arms, wrapped snugly in a quilt, dead to the world. Grandma M appeared as Maggie stepped into the entryway. She transferred her bundle to Christine before speaking. Sue's pains started around midnight. Her water broke about an hour ago when things are moving pretty fast. The docs said it would be best if Emily woke up over here. Thanks, Maggie, 
Grandma M said. Give them both our love and tell them we're praying. After Maggie left, Grandma M led the way back up the stairs with a lamp in her hand. When she moved toward the spare bedroom, Christine's voice quietly stopped her. Grandma M, can I take her into my bed? Oh, Christine, you don't have to do that. She slept in here before. I know I don't have to, but I want to. Christine snuggled the little girl closer to her. She's precious, isn't she? Yes, she certainly is. You go ahead and take her into your bed. I'll see you both in the morning. Wrapped inside the quilt along with Emily, uh, wrapped inside the quilt along with Emily was needed clothing for the next day. Christine hung the little dress in her own closet before easing into bed beside a still sleeping Emily. As was becoming her habit, Christine prayed before she slept. Tonight, she pulled Emily close beside her and asked God for a child of her own.